Eleftheriades? Eleftheriades. Okay, he's the chief scientist and co-founder of Video. Thank you. Th thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for staying up uh, so late for these presentations. Um, uh, let me tell you a few things about, uh, uh, about video. Um, it, 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 it develops uh, internet-based video conferencing products, uh, but uh, for enterprises. It was founded in 2005 uh, in the United States by Offer Sapiro Everymore and uh, myself. I was at the time a professor at Columbia University in, uh, in New York in electrical engineering, uh, where I actually did my PhD, and I did my undergrad actually here in, in Greece, in the National Technical University of, uh, of Athens. The, the first products were launched in 2008, and the company has actually done four rounds of funding for a total of right now of $99 million. Uh, it's a venture-backed company, uh, initially by Seven Rose and, and Star Ventures. Seven Rose is a fairly big uh, venture capital firm in, in the States. And later on, uh, other companies joined, uh, Ford River, Juniper, Menlo, Raw Ventures, and Questmark uh, uh, partners. Uh, right now, the company has more than 300 employees. And as I said, it's US-based. It has offices in, the, uh, in, in New Jersey, where the headquarters are, but also in California and Silicon Valley. And it has worldwide offices in a number of countries. And these are mostly, uh, actually, sales. All the development is, is done in the, in the, in the United States. Uh, Vito has cr created a lot of momentum. It has more than 2,000 Fortune 100 and, uh, small and medium businesses. It has nearly 30 service providers offering its products, as well as 300 plus resellers globally. It actually has 65 million Google Plus users. Uh, Google is actually a customer of ours, and the video part that you see in Google Hangouts uh, is actually done by, uh, by us. It has gotten a lot of industry recognition. Uh, I believe we have 20 awards. Most notably, from the Wall Street Journal, we were ranked in the top uh, 50 venture-backed companies uh, in the States three years in a row for 10, 2011-2012. And we're also picked as a 2013 technology pioneer from the World Economic Forum. Um, that innovation is a key part of the company, and I'll, I'll speak more about it in a, in a second. Uh, we introduced a new video conferencing architecture, uh, and we're actually first to deliver high-definition video conferencing over the Internet. And th that technology is covered by 22 patents that have already been awarded, and there is 40, 54 more that are actually uh, pending. This whole effort is actually... Uh, very much innovation, uh, innovation driven. And because we are based on, an, uh, on, a, on a software platform, it's actually very extendable, and that's why we actually also have uh, OEM partners, meaning companies who actually get our software, and then they resell it as their own, and that list includes, uh, as I said, Google, Rico, and Hitachi, among others. Okay. So what video did, and this is a typical example of a, of a company in the technology space, is identify a void. So we are all familiar with, uh, with uh, uh, Skype, right? A free service for, for, for audio and video communication, which offers uh, uh, reasonable quality, not great, but also it's uh, unpredictable. On the other side uh, of this uh, uh, diagram, where virtually you have vertically you have uh, quality and then horizontally you have cost, you have the traditional products. Uh, these are uh, products that are based on what's called a, a multi-point control unit, which is a very expensive piece of hardware that you have to put in your network. And on the high end, you have what's called telepresence systems. And these are systems that are extremely expensive. Uh, they have very large monitors. You set up the room in specific layout, specific furniture, and specific colors. And setting a room like that could cost you like $300,000 in the, in the US. The MCU systems are in the order of $100,000 uh, a, a pop. Again, we're talking about enterprise uh, solutions. So uh, that's, what, what, that's what was um, available in the past. Now, there is a clear need now for people to be able to do this sort of video communication uh, even from their own desktops. And I'm not talking about just uh, consumers at home. This is also needed in, in, the, in the enterprise. Okay? Um, Gartner, for example, predicts you know, 200 million users by 2015. But you don't need Gartner to tell you that this is something that's actually happening right now. So what video did is introduce a disruptive architecture, new technology that is actually able to deliver the type of quality that you traditionally associate with a very expensive product, but now with a new architecture that allows you to offer it at a much lower cost. So uh, 
there are two pieces to this puzzle. This is not a technical talk, so I'm not going to talk details. But how to, we had to build two things, a scalable video coding scheme and a device which is called a video router. And uh, what the scalable coding does, it's, it calls the video in several different pieces called layers. These are sent to the router, which then just decides which of those pieces to send to the different terminals. If you have a high resolution terminal, uh, you send everything and you get a very high quality picture. If you have a low resolution terminal, for example an iPhone, there's no need to get a full sized image, so you get a smaller image. Okay? Now the beauty of all this is that the video router in between, that device does have to do any processing of the data. It just receives packets. Uh, and, and then forwards packets. There's no processing whatsoever. That's in contrast with what happens with the traditional MCU-based solutions. In that, uh, in that uh, category, you would have to use, in this example of serving 600 high-definition ports, you would need uh, 114 rack units. Uh, and a rack unit is it's just a, it's a, it's a size that you measure the equipment you put in, in equipment runs in data centers. Now, for the equivalent capacity using a video router, you would only need six rack units. As you can see, you have an order of magnitude, actually more so, more than a magnitude improvement in terms of density, cost, quality, and also power. And power is actually extremely important in modern, uh, in modern data, uh, data centers. Also, because this is based on software, you can run it even on a cloud, in a virtual machine. So you don't even have to have a, a physical server of your own. You just run the router in the, in, in the cloud. So doing so allows you to have several different types of endpoints, and you don't need to buy endpoints actually even from us. You can use an executive desktop like all-in-one computer you can buy from HP that has a touch screen, and you can use that as an endpoint. Of course, you can use an iMac. We sell also room systems where, you know, for less than $20,000, which is relatively cheap, you can have a room, to, uh, you have a setup for your video conference uh, 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 system where you have two monitors and a high quality camera and so on. And in fact, most of the cost is from the monitors, TVs, right, and the, and the, and the camera. The camera is actually quite expensive. And of course, you can have iPhone support, Android, iPad 2, uh, or the new iPads. And on the high end, we, we have what we call uh, panorama. These are systems that have very big arrays of monitors. In this example, it's a three by three. Now, the beauty of all this is that all these devices can actually participate in the same video conference. Okay? Uh, and that's something that nobody else uh, could actually uh, deliver. And that's why today, in the video conferencing industry, all the players have switched to scalable coding. They have followed our lead. The only, ex the only exception is Cisco. Uh, on the other side, you see companies like Microsoft, Polycom. Uh, Polycom is the largest company in the video conferencing space. Obviously, Microsoft doesn't need an introduction. But you see all the different players. And some are using our technology, our customers. Some are using their, uh, 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 their own. Okay? So, so this, is, this is actually a reasonably uh, nice story of a, a you know, brave new world of high-tech uh, startups in the United States. And the question is, how does that relate to us here in Greece? I live in Greece, I grew up here in Greece, spent 15 years in the States, but I'm back. And I was trying to figure out, you know, how can you actually go from, from this, which is my calendar entry for my meeting with my co-founder of Shapiro. And you'll notice this is a Greek calendar, actually. On those days, I was using those paper calendars, probably because I had done my military service recently. But anyway, so there is an entry of that meeting. So out of that meeting, you know, everything else that I just described followed. How, so so how, to, how do we get there? Um, so I was thinking about that, and I had a, an insight which I would like to share with you today. So bear with me. Uh, I was in Antiparos this summer, uh, and uh, walking on the main street, there's a nice bookstore, and it sells both new and used books, and I bumped into this one. Uh, it's called Hornblower and the Atropos. And my friend, a friend of mine, who is also uh, a sailor, had mentioned to me Hornblower, and I said, great, I'll take it and, and read it. And in fact, I enjoyed it so much that I got the whole series. It's 11 books. I'm currently starting book number, uh, book number 10. Uh, so. Uh, this actually series is the second most popular series in the UK after Sherlock Holmes. I don't know about Harry Potter, that probably changed the, the numbers, okay? But at least that's, that's what I knew. So what this is all about, uh, Hornblower is actually a, a, a sailor, uh, and the, the series follows his, his uh, 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 career from a midshipman, which is like an entry-level officer, all the way to being an admiral in the, in the Royal Navy during the Napoleonic uh, Wars, okay, when, when England was fighting with, uh, with, uh, with France. And 
these are actually the ships that uh, uh, they were using at the time. Uh, this is a this particular ship is actually quite famous. is a is a flagship that Nelson used in the Battle of uh, uh, of uh, Trafalgar. Okay, and 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 you see there has this has three rows of cannons. You know, it has three masts, uh, three masts. Okay, and these machines were actually propelled or managed by man and wind. Okay, there's no steam. There's no gas, there's no diesel, no electricity, okay? So these huge machines uh, had operated, operated in, in a very uh, uh, intelligent way. And the beauty of, of the series uh, uh, of Hornblower is that the books describe uh, all the, the, the seamanship that is required to make that happen, but also uh, take you through all the different stages of the career steps, if you wish, of that person from the very lowest level Okay, to the highest. In each, in each step, it identifies not only the technical things that this person had to master, but also the emotional requirements of the job. So in that respect, I think the, 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 the book is quite effective. And you can see from this photograph here, for example, the complexity of this device. To actually set sail on a device like that, you need to send 200 people up in the mast and in the shrouds, okay, and execute a very carefully choreographed maneuver. Imagine tacking or turning that boat okay, on a wind. They were called ships of the line because in battle they would go in line and what they would do is they would fire all the cannons together, what's called a broadside. So imagine having, this guy has 100 plus cannons. Imagine having 50 cannons fired at the same time against an enemy. You're basically uh, demolished. Any ship that is found on its path is going to be demolished. So, uh, so the... the, the I think what we, we get out of this is, is actually the difficulties and the challenges of collective uh, human creative uh, activity. And I think that's, it doesn't have to do with technology. It doesn't have to do even with the historical context, okay? Uh, it, the, all these things change all the time. What you're seeing here is a process that is repeatable, okay? And it, it has several elements, okay? Clarity of goal. It has, you have to know exactly what it is you want to do, and it has to be meaningful and valuable. For example, for business, somebody has to have a pain, and you have to have to answer for that uh, pain, okay? People are key. Knowledge and training, ideally, you, won't, you have to know what you're actually serving extremely well. You have to be coming through the space that you're turning back now and offering uh, uh, a service, okay? Uh, you have to have commitment to the common goal by everybody involved. Uh, you need to find the right role for each person. Not everybody needs to be a CEO or wants to be a CEO. Not everybody needs to or wants to be a programmer. Everybody in their own uh, you know, evol career evolution, they need to find the right place for, uh, for themselves. And of course, you need hard work. In fact, you need more than that. You need this relentless pursuit of perfection. You have to work hard, but you also have to work, sm you have to work smart as well. So your work has to be uh, uh, effective. And talent and luck are, are accelerate the process, but unfortunately, they, they cannot replace it, okay? And uh, in my opinion, persistence is, is key. Uh, I told you about successes. I can spend hours talking to you about my failures. I will not do that. I will not bore you. But there are plenty, okay? And I think that's, that's extremely important. Now, staying on this slide, I ask you to think how many of these things we support and we, we sort of encourage here in Greece. How many of these things do we actually teach to our kids, you know, from, from elementary school, high school, university, okay? And how many of these things do we actually practice in our, in our daily lives? Okay, those sailors I was talking about before, when they were not in battle, they were honing the skills every single day. They were doing exercises, okay? So, uh, uh, to me, I think, you know, unfortunately, we live in a very difficult time, you know, for, uh, uh, for Greece. And actually, and Marcos' talk was uh, fantastic in this respect in, in putting a, you know, a very bright uh, light on the situation. Uh, in the past, you know, we were only able, in my generation, the only avenue to be able to do things like that was to study and go abroad. Now, at least, it's a little bit better, for sure, because you can, not only you can actually go directly and work abroad through the European Union, but there are actually great companies, like uh, Marcus's, in fact, where you can go there and learn these things, and that's key, okay? The, 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 the most important thing is that you need to learn these things, okay, to be able then to take them 
and build the next generation of companies. So hearing Marcos mention those four companies that grew out of upstream, I think that's, that's really the key. Now, uh, I want to also mention uh, another uh, famed uh, Navy-related uh, quote, this one from Steve Jobs. He said that it's more fun to be a pirate than to join the Navy. And of course, this plays extremely well to the Greek psyche, where we think of ourselves as, you know, revolutionaries, not playing by the rules, you know, always following the alternative route. But I think there is a misunderstanding here, okay? Because to be a pirate, first of all, you have to be a great sailor, okay? After you have mastered that, okay, then you can be a pirate. And what does being a pirate mean? It means that uh, uh, you set your own course, and you sell for your own benefit. And, and I think more than anything else, uh, entrepreneurship means exactly that, to set your own course. Thank you very much. Very nice. Thank you.